Well, let's talk about the facts and figures regarding Caminati. He's unbeaten in five starts. He's the best of his generation. But the question is, will he be as effective over the extra two and a half furlongs here at Doncaster as he has been at the end of his races so far? If you look at Camelot's pedigree, I think there's a serious doubt on the dam side as to whether a mile and six, whether he'd be effective at a mile and six. However, if you look at the derby and the way that he, he stayed so well, and particularly the Irish derby, in which he travelled into the race like clearly the superior horse, and then found that the ground was just too heavy for him, and he got himself home through sheer grit and stamina. If you look at that, I think that gives you definite hope, more than hope, that he's going to be effective over one mile, six and a half furlongs. And Steve, there'll be people out there who'll be saying, well, his class is going to get him home, even though he may not be at his best over a mile, six and a half furlongs. That might be the case if there's nothing anywhere near as good as him, but it's not the case if there is something pretty good. I mean, the same happened in 1977. Alleged was a really class horse, came here with an unbeaten record, went on to win the Ark a few weeks later and then follow up the following year. He was a very good horse, a better horse probably than Dunfermline who beat him. But at the trip, Dunfermline was the stronger stayer and basically over that extra two and a half furlong, she just had more stamina than he did. So it is easy just to, just to say you're the best horse and say you're last home. It is considerably further than he's run before. Tactics against him. Is it possible that we might see someone trying to run very hard and trying to make it a really demanding test where there are going to be some big distances between the horses at the end of that race? I, I think it's a certainty that um, John Gosden, for example, who's got a strong hand against him, will be of a mind to test the horse's stamina. One of the best trials traditionally for the St. Nedger is the great voltage at York, and the winner of the race this year is Thought Worthy. He's trained by John Gosden. There was no pace in the Voltager. William dictated it from the front. And I know he went and took three lengths out of them on the bend, and then they couldn't quite get it back. On the other hand, I feel this horse would be better running at an even tempo over an extended trip. So I would have thought a nice even gallop, not a crazy gallop, a nice solid even gallop in the St. Ledger would be what he wants on a big flat galloping track. I would be surprised if he doesn't stay because his, his brother won the Voltager and the Ledger and, and stayed very well. So. You know, George Strawbridge likes to breed a proper middle distance staying horse, which makes him very rare amongst American breeders. But he likes the, the, the profile of our racing here with the, the, the classics over a mile and a half, and then this one over one mile, six and a half. He, he very much likes that rather than everything being around one turn in America. Now, the last horse to win the Great Voltager and go on to win the St. Ledger was Lucano, the full brother of Thoughtworthy. Can Thoughtworthy do the same, Steve? He gives you the impression all the time that a mile and a half is his minimum. He tries very hard, he's very genuine, very game. He'll certainly go on good ground. And as I say, I think he'll relish every inch of the trip. My nagging doubt about Thoughtworthy is whether he's quite good enough. The one thing that is in his favour is the track. I think that's going to suit mm -hmm. him. One thing that will bring Camelot and him closer together is that Thoughtworthy didn't really handle Epsom mm. like he didn't really handle Newmarket earlier on in, in the season. And so a flatter track, which he got at York, will see him to, to good advantage. Michelangelo will be wearing the same silks as last year's St. Ledger winner, Mars Marvel. And like that horse, he's trained by John Gosden. He's a horse who's taken a little time to come to himself. To me, he's still uh, developing and strengthening, particularly behind the saddle. And uh, I, you know, I'm very happy with his, his racing this year. We had difficulty finding a maiden with, which wasn't heavy ground in the spring, so he wound up running in a listed. Then he won a listed small field at Goodwood. Uh, and, and I was very happy with his win here over mile a quarter in the sales race. He then went to Goodwood again and got a little bit in balance when the, the tempo was up. He stayed on well. Uh, like Arctic Cosmos, who won a ledger, he, who was third in the Gordon. He goes on a similar sort of profile. So I think stamina is not the issue for him. Probably whether he has enough strength at this stage in his development would probably be more of an issue. It's something I'd see him coming into his, into his prime at four. When Arctic Cosmos run, you, you put uh, headgear on the first night. Any chance of your horses being tried with headgear? Or I think Michelangelo would be a strong possibility for the same reason. He's a very genuine horse, but he's quite dreamy. Lacks focus. I popped them on yesterday. William was happy with them on. Just to give him focus. I think the track will suit. Uh, I th the galloping track. I think the trip will suit. He'll probably put up a career best performance in the St Ledger and it'll be nowhere near good enough. Well, the horse who got closest to Camelot in the derby at Epsom was Main Sequence. 
He's a good horse. He was second in the Derby, unlucky in France, close second, and some people thought unfortunate in the Voltigeur. I'm not 100% sure I agree with that, but either way, he's a good horse. I think he needs to improve for one mile, six and a bit. I, it, both his run style, breeding, everything doesn't persuade me he's going to do that. Ursa Major has been an outstanding form this year and won a St Ledger trial, albeit an Irish St Ledger trial last time. He's trained by Tommy Carmody. His horse that doesn't do anything at home and he's just progressed from day one and he's improved and improved and he obviously likes the soft conditions. I don't know what he'd be like on drier ground because he hasn't had because of the summer we've had. Is there anything about the way he moves, the way he works that encourages you that he'd be OK on good ground or do you think he would always prefer a bit of cut? Everything points to the soft ground, but you don't know until you try. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Ursa Major put in a really good performance to beat Hatani last time out. He travelled very easily and won with a lot in hand. Yeah, and the first two pulled over 20 lengths clear of the third, so I don't think there's any suggestion Hatani didn't run his race, and he had good form going into it. I, you know, I'm taking that at face value. He will definitely stay. All his form is either on an artificial surface or on soft ground. He has never encountered a sound surface. I have no idea how he'll handle that. A rapidly improving three-year-old who won Lydia's favourite race, the Melrose Stakes, last time is Guarantee. He's trained in Newmarket by William Haggis. I was quoted beforehand as saying it would need a group performance to win it, and I firmly believe that. So I think he showed that he is a group performer in the making on that day. I don't know about the ground, because I've never run. I've always believed he was better with a bit of cut in the ground, but I've never run him on fast ground. Um, I'm not sure about the ground, but as a fluent mover, so... I don't know. Frankly, I think the only way we can beat Camelot is, is, you know, by outstaying him. Anyone can beat Camelot by outstaying him. So if John Gosden runs his pacemaker Dartford and, uh, and they go very fast, then it's obviously going to suit us and I'm sure you'll get the trip. Now, there isn't anybody in the country who assesses, analyses and takes in, breathes in the Melrose quite as much <laughs> as Lydia does. Um, how good a winner was Guarantee this year? Uh, the Melrose, forget the St Ledger, the Melrose, <laughs> the Melrose, that's the race. Um, I think it was a very, very good Melrose. Uh, the time was good. I think probably three of the first four, maybe all four, first four home, were good horses. This horse stays really well and I think he's, he's a, a real strong outsider. He'll be kept away from what we imagine is a strong pace. He did that at York, he'll be held up, he won't get embroiled in any you know, early, early shenanigans. I think he'll come home really well. We all agree he has to step forward again markedly to win Ledger, of course he does, but um, I think he's, he's the most likely outsider in the race. Lucano won the Great Voltager and then the St Ledger back in 2007. His full brother, Thoughtworthy, has won the Great Voltager. Not sure whether he's good enough to beat Camelot, but I'm pretty certain he'll be in the three. It's not just because I love the Melrose, but I think that Guarantee is massively overpriced in this race and he's a really good each-way bet. No prizes for originality, but I think Camelot, 42 years on, will follow in the footsteps of Nijinsky. Mm -hmm.